What's up, everyone? A lot of you ask about how to put together a three-course meal, and we think these three vegetarian recipes would satisfy all of your textual cravings. To start, my dad will walk us through how to make the crispiest, crunchiest oh. egg rolls ever. A recipe my dad's perfected thousands of times, also known as so Thai chun gun, or literally spring rolls. It's a curious story how people started calling these egg rolls, since there are no eggs to be found in the wrapper or filling. We'll get to that later, but first, my dad will teach us how a Chinese chef prepares the secret ingredients for this recipe. This is the for the dry shiitake mushrooms, my dad rehydrates them by soaking them in hot water for around 10 to 15 minutes. We'll also rehydrate some clear ear fungus in the same way, and it'll look like this once rehydrated. We'll set the rehydrated vermicelli aside to drain, and now my dad will show you how he chops everything down for the filling. With this amount of ingredients, we'll be making 20 egg rolls today. We'll cut out the hard stalk of the cabbage with two angled cuts. Then we'll stack all the leaves and start to chop it into fine strips. We'll bunch up the clatter fungus and chop into similarly sized strips. We'll use the same technique to cut our shiitake mushrooms into strips. We'll first cut the celery into two inch segments. We're using regular celery here, but you can also use Chinese celery for an extra kick of flavor. Then we'll turn them perpendicular and chop them into strips. We'll chop these snow peas into strips just like our previous ingredients. Our recipe today is fully plant-based, but like my dad said, you're free to add whatever you like to the filling as long as it's not too wet, and he'll explain why later. Now here's a pro tip from my dad for cutting carrots safely. With already cut 2 inch segments of carrot, we'll first cut it into thin slices. Then we'll lay them down and cut into strips like the rest of the ingredients. Now we'll roughly mince 3 cloves of garlic. Now my dad will create the glue that will seal our spring rolls later by combining two tablespoons of flour and two tablespoons of water. We have all of these ingredients listed on our blog at madewithlao.com, along with step-by-step -step instructions and video clips to guide you as you make the recipe at home. Now my dad will walk us through how to cook the juiciest filling. We'll heat the wok on high until it's hot or about a minute. Then we'll add one tablespoon of oil. We'll spread the oil around the wok for around 30 to 40 seconds, then add garlic. After cooking the mushrooms for about 20 to 30 seconds, we'll add the celery. Then we'll follow quickly with the cabbage. After adding each ingredient, we'll mix them thoroughly in the wok. Now after around 30 seconds of cooking the cabbage, we'll add our next ingredient. We'll also add the cloud ear fungus here. With scissors, we'll cut the vermicelli a few times to make it easier to cook and wrap. 
After a quick mix of about 30 to 40 seconds, we're ready to add some seasoning. We'll mix in our seasoning well, then add our final ingredients. We'll make a small hole in our ingredients for the vermicelli. We'll add the vermicelli to the hole and mix it around the bottom of the wok to soak up any moisture from the veggies. Then we'll cover the vermicelli with the veggies and mix it in well. We'll add a tablespoon of sesame oil here. We'll stir fry for a final 30 to 40 seconds here to make sure it's mixed well. How do you prevent mushy filling? Why are these called egg rolls if there are no eggs in them? In Cantonese, these are called chungun, which means spring rolls, as in the season. In the US, egg roll and spring roll are basically used interchangeably, but they're actually different. Spring rolls have a long history in Chinese cuisine, with the earliest versions dating back to the Tang Dynasty in southern China. Like many Chinese dishes brought over by immigrants, spring rolls evolved and became what we know as egg rolls. The name is a bit of a mystery, but one theory is that the name of a similar dish was published in an English cookbook in 1917, and it was then later applied to the American version of the spring roll. Egg rolls are generally larger and have thicker skin than spring rolls and ironically don't have any egg in the recipe. Of course, there are many different versions of spring rolls in Asia and around the world, which just shows how amazingly adaptable they are. Today we're making this smaller, traditional Cantonese style roll with thinner skin, so we should call this a spring roll. <laughs> To make wrapping easier, we'll carefully separate each wrapper one at a time and make a loose stack. We'll only separate the amount we need. With the wrapper in front of us like a diamond, we'll put about two tablespoons of filling on the closer half. At the halfway point, we'll crease and fold in the sides of the wrapper. We'll put a bit of the flour and water glue on the top corner of the wrapper. Then continue rolling and it should seal at the end. Why are some egg rolls bumpy? Before you start wrapping, do you ever have to drain the veggies? If you squeeze out the water. Squeeze out the water. 
噶嘛，佢有時擺喺入邊雪櫃過夜，先至再炸。咁佢啲皮咧，咪吸細嗰啲餡嗰啲水分咯，咁炸起就唔黑咯。即係個個春卷會爛係咪？爆甩甩爛咯，會裂開咯。即刻爆，即刻炸。冇錯啦，即刻爆好一次炸，咁啊最好噶啦。嗱，呢度得啦，嗰個。即刻中間嚟，唔係呢度得噶啦，好得呢啲冷豆擺正中間，係咯，得咩咩，攞實啲，誒改卷啦，好啦，呢度手指，撳一撳呢度，呢度冇咁嘅，嗯，得，呢度又係咁啦，手指，耶，係咯係咯係咯 ，OK， 嗯，呀 ，OK 可以，佢鬆咗啲，唔緊要啦，俾啲成績啊 ，B 加 ，B 加，耶 ，OK。Now with the wrapping done, my dad will teach us how to deep fry the spring rolls into the crispiest golden creations. Well, my dad, now we're starting to make the spring rolls. Now we're starting to open them. We'll turn the heat to high and add our oil to the pot. We're adding about three cups of oil here. We don't need to add any more oil. Just add the oil. Now, we can start to make the oil. About 330. Oh, 330. Now, we can start to make the oil. When the oil reaches around 330 degrees Fahrenheit, we'll turn our heat to low and add in our spring rolls. We'll put in six at a time to not overcrowd the pot. Don't buy the oil. You see the oil? The oil is already cut and the oil is still hot. When it's cut, it's about to turn red. Then we'll turn the oil off. We'll turn it 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 off. How do you prevent them from exploding? Look at your hands. When you cook it too hot, it will burn up the meat. Now we're starting to turn red. 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 After about a minute and a half of frying on low, we'll turn the heat to high. When you turn red, it will immediately turn red. This higher heat fry is meant to crisp up the outside and get that beautiful golden color. My egg rolls tend to stay pale even after frying them for 20 minutes. What am I doing wrong? Ah? They're not pale. They don't have to be pale for 20 minutes. They don't have to be pale for 20 minutes. They don't have to be pale for 20 minutes. After another minute and a half of frying on a high heat and when they're a golden color, we're ready to take them out. It's done. It doesn't need to be done very well. My dad is saying that the residual heat from the oil will continue to cook the wrapper, so there's no need to fry for too long. Turning the heat to low again, we'll put in the next batch. If you need to lower the overall oil temperature quickly, you can also throw in a few more egg rolls. Four people asked, "How do you keep them crispy?" You, 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 as we remove them from the oil, my dad likes to let the oil drain in the spider strainer before putting them on a plate. Okay, What do you do with leftover oil? You use the container easy to clean. Most of the time we use the china and then also the glass one. Do you ever like funnel it back into the bottle? Oh, you look at that. You do it. You do it. You do it. In the restaurant, our customers sit down. Yeah. Most of the time, the first dish is egg roll. Then bring the appetite first. Hmm. 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 That is a good crunch. Cheers. 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 C
<laughs> Next, my dad will show us how to prepare the luscious main event. <laughs> Buddha's delight. I grew up eating this every year on the first day of the Chinese New Year, but I never really understood why it was so important to our family and Chinese culture until my parents explained why in this video. Maybe you grew up with this too, but if you're not familiar, this Buddha's delight is a guaranteed crowd pleaser, packed with over a dozen vegetables, crunchy textures, and creamy flavors. My dad's been making this for over 50 years now, and he'll be sharing a special stir frying process for home cooks and three essential ingredients most people have never heard of, starting with bamboo fungus. <laughs> My dad mixes cold and hot water to get warm water here. We'll also soak the vermicelli, cloud ear fungus, and dried shiitake mushrooms in warm water. Make sure to reserve the water you're soaking the shiitake mushrooms in for an important step later. After those are all soaking, it's time to cut some ingredients. <laughs> Chi now, my dad's gonna teach us a simple way to make your carrots fancier. Growing up, I ate this all the time without really questioning why. But finally, I learned more about this tradition that's been passed down through many generations. Did you eat this growing up? In the New Year. Yeah. One of my favorite New Year dish. Since I was little, I remember we get red emerald, we get new coats on. Different area have different, little different. For me, I remember my parents treat us, we don't eat meat that day. Why is it forbidden to include meat in this dish? Well, in Cantonese, this dish is often called ho nin zai toy or lo hon zai, which literally means our hot vegetarian food. To which you might say, what's an arhat? In Buddhism, arhat refers to one that has reached nirvana, but in the context of this dish, it refers to the original followers of Buddha. For Buddha's religion, they think in that day, no meat, that means they don't kill the animal. So for New Year, first day, it's really clean. Setting the whole year safe and well and good luck. You might also be asking, why are there so many ingredients in this dish? Well, going back to Chinese Buddhism, there were originally 18 arhats, and traditional versions of Buddha's delight feature 18 ingredients to represent the 18 arhats, with many of the ingredients containing their own auspicious symbolism. Of course, like us, you don't have to have 18 ingredients, nor do you have to eat it for New Year's. This dish is a delight for vegetarians and meat lovers all year round. Next up, we'll learn how to prepare an ingredient you absolutely cannot skip. After cutting all those ingredients, we'll move on to our aromatics. We'll smash, peel, and mince three cloves of garlic. Next, we'll chop up an equivalent amount of ginger into slightly larger pieces. Now, we'll return to the bamboo fungus that's been soaking. Next, 
We'll squeeze out the water from the top down, then cut off the ends, leaving only the heads of the fungus. At this point, you might be wondering, what is bamboo fungus? Bamboo fungus is a great vegetarian alternative to meat since it gives an amazing earthy flavor and meat-like texture to any dish. Also known as doksang in Cantonese, they're basically mushrooms that often grow in bamboo forests. In the old days in China, bamboo fungus was considered an expensive delicacy reserved for special occasions since it could only be harvested in the wild. Nowadays, many species of fungi, including this one, are cultivated and they can be commonly found in most Asian grocery stores. It works especially well on Buddha's delight as it soaks in the delicious sauces and rich flavors of other ingredients. There's no need to be too exact here, but we'll cut them into around 1 to 2 inch segments. This next ingredient is critical for the texture. Six people asked, including wow. Richard, Mary, JT, and Winnie from Patreon, wow. are there specific ingredients you can or cannot include? <laughs> For this dish, you cannot skip cow ear yeah. fungus. Yeah. You cannot skip uh, snow pea and fan si. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> pretty much some of the material made this dish taste good. Oh, oh, oh. And then you cannot skip. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, you can put something you like. Next, we'll be preparing our flavors, starting with a secret umami packed ingredient my dad uses in a bunch of other dishes. So someone said they've had it and it didn't have any taste. And she was asking, like, do I need to add MSG? Okay, you want to for the sauce, we'll mix together one tablespoon of vegetarian oyster sauce, one tablespoon of light soy sauce, one teaspoon of dark soy sauce, one tablespoon of cooking wine, two teaspoons of sugar, a half teaspoon of salt, we can always add more later if needed, and a quarter teaspoon of white pepper. Then we'll give it a quick mix. This next step is really important and extremely easy to get wrong, so pay attention to what my dad does here. We'll heat the wok on high until it's hot, about 30 to 40 seconds, then we'll add oil. We'll swirl the oil around to make sure it's heating evenly. Once the oil is at 160 degrees Celsius, or after about a minute of heating, we're ready to fry the dried bean curd sheets. Once the sheet starts to bubble and float, or about 8 to 10 seconds, it's ready to come out. We'll fry these in batches to not crowd the wok. My dad always reserves oil to use in cooking other ingredients or dishes. After the deep frying, we'll move on to blanching our ingredients, so we'll heat up a pot of water. Once the water is boiling, we'll add in a clouder fungus and baby corn. After 20 to 30 seconds, we'll follow with the bamboo fungus. After another 30 to 40 seconds, we'll take them out. Now we'll blanch the next batch of veggies. We'll blanch the carrot and celery for about a minute and a half. Then they're ready to come out. 
Now that we're done blanching, we'll switch back to the wok for some stir frying. There are a lot of subtle nuances here and a simple sequence that my dad uses to avoid over or undercooking certain ingredients. So pay close attention. First, we'll heat the wok on high for about one minute. Then we'll add about two tablespoons of the oil we saved from earlier. After stir frying the aromatics for 20 to 30 seconds, we'll add the shiitake mushrooms. We'll add the king oyster mushrooms here too. A general cooking tip, my dad usually stir fries thicker vegetables and mushrooms first since they take longer to cook. We'll stir fry for 30 to 40 seconds, then add some cooking wine. Now we'll add about 8 ounces of water, including the water we use to soak the shiitake mushrooms. We'll put in all the ingredients we blanched earlier. Don't forget the Napa cabbage leaves and, of course, our deep fried friend from before. Now we'll cover with a lid and cook for 4 to 5 minutes. Winnie from Patreon asks, does your dad use bok choy? Yes, I like bok choy. 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 If you can find bok choy, what do you like? How do you like bok choy? Every year we use bok choy. Bok choy, bok choy. Bok choy. Yeah, bok choy. 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 Once we've mixed in the seafood mushrooms, we'll add the all-important sauce we created earlier. Pro tip, my dad uses some of the liquid from the wok to get the remaining fermented bean curd from the dish because every bit counts. Someone asks, are there any shortcuts to making this? Maybe using an instant pot or a pressure cooker? Well, maybe a question for that is if somebody only has 20 minutes to make this, is there a shortcut? I think one of the big challenges with Buddha's delight is preventing it from turning into a big soup, since we have so many vegetables potentially releasing water content. My dad will be showing us a few easy techniques to prevent this, starting with cornstarch. We'll mix one tablespoon of cornstarch and one tablespoon of water to make a slurry for later. We'll move the lid after about a minute and a half. Yeah, 
We don't necessarily need to add all the slurry. Add some and give it a stir to see if it's enough to thicken the sauce to your preference. How do you like not have water at the bottom? Now we'll see if the next generation will approve of this classic New Year's dish. Finally, my dad will teach us how to cook the saucy classic. Fun Tomatoes. Tomato and eggs. A classic Chinese scrambled egg dish that is super quick, easy to make, and only requires two main ingredients. But we'll start with my dad's special technique to peel a tomato. Fun Tomatoes. With the sharp knife, we'll score an X on the bottom of the tomato and continue the scoring to the top of the tomato. Paul from Patreon asks, Do you recommend peeled or unpeeled tomatoes? If you want to make more chop, you can cut it off. It's easier to cut it off. If you want to cut it off, it won't cut it off. It's easier to cut it off. It's easier to cut it off. After 30 seconds in the piping hot water, we'll take out the tomato and we'll be able to peel back the skin easily with a knife. For the rest of the tomatoes, we'll leave them unpeeled, but that's up to your preference. Feel free to peel all of them or none of them. After cutting off the hard parts, we'll slice the tomato into wedges. Notice how my dad is cutting the tomato wedges at an angle. This is because he wants to prevent the juicier core from separating from the fleshier exterior of the tomato. If you cut straight along the core, like how we typically cut orange slices, the tomatoes are more likely to fall apart. I also wanted to make a special shout out to thank all of our wonderful Patreon supporters for helping bring this video to life. If you enjoy our videos and are interested in supporting us directly, head on over to patreon.com slash madewithlao to learn more. From Winnie and Susan from Patreon, is there a particular type of tomato that's best for this? But you know how there's like Roma tomatoes, there's like... Keep going, Randy, what you got? <laughs> heirloom tomatoes, there's like different types of tomatoes. Is there one he looks for? Not too small, not too big. In Cantonese, tomatoes are called fan ke, which literally translates to foreign eggplant. This is a nod to China's confused but curious first impression of tomatoes when they first arrived on the scene a few hundred years ago during the Ming Dynasty. Since then, tomatoes have made their way into different niches of Chinese cuisine, especially in classic dishes like beef and tomato stir fry or my dad's tomato tofu soup. After preparing the ginger, we'll move on to our eggs. Some people ask, what is the general tomato to egg ratio? Tomato 
，四通匙，呢、這個就生滾水嚟嘅，啱啱煮個時用嚇。咁我而家開始開火，燒紅椒鍋之後咧，燒紅椒加油就炒蛋啦，炒蛋先嘅啦。We'll heat our pan until it's hot but not smoking, which was about a minute and a half for this carbon steel pan. Carbon steel is one of the primary materials used in cookware, alongside stainless steel, nonstick, and cast iron. Most chefs agree that carbon steel combines the best qualities of these three materials. It's what my dad used 99% of the time in Chinese restaurant kitchens. 睇完有煙出嚟啫，炒蛋就睇熱啦。炒蛋嘅時候落多少少油唔緊要，一個湯匙嘅油上去，攞攞就鍋佢，就咁攞下佢嗱，呢個油出啦嚇，攞啲蛋上去。Once the eggs are in the pan, we'll push it around until it's mostly cooked, or about 30 to 40 seconds. Now we'll put the eggs aside before they overcook. How do you make sure the eggs are really soft and fluffy? First, you need to put some oil on it. You put some oil on it. You cook 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 it. You Put after stir frying the tomatoes for around 30 seconds, we'll add about 3 tablespoons of water. From Leslie, when and how does your dad like to season the dish? After about two and a half minutes of cooking, we'll start to add our corn starch slurry. We'll slowly mix in the slurry, checking the consistency as we go. We don't have to use all of it if it's thick enough already. After another 30 seconds of cooking with the slurry added, we'll put in our eggs. Midori from Patreon asked, How do you prevent this from becoming too watery? After cooking the eggs for 30 seconds, we can turn off the heat. How do you prevent the dish from having a raw tomato taste? For me, when I cook tomato before, I never do like a daddy put ketchup. It's always have a, like a raw tomato taste. Since daddy cook, always put like a, a little more sugar, put ketchup, I never have that kind of taste anymore. The ketchup can cover the raw taste. Okay. 
After the ketchup is well mixed in, we can plate the dish and hear about my dad's experience with tomato and egg back in China. Did you guys have this growing up? No. Go YouTube thinks you'll like this recipe next. Let's see if they're right.